On this episode of What's Going On Shipping, we're going to learn when things are really in major emergency in the shipping industry. And the way you can usually tell it is it makes the mainstream news. This is a BBC News story. Ningbo, global supply fears as China partially shuts down a major port. This is all across the major news outlets. And we've been talking about issues in the global supply chain for quite a while, especially with regards to shipping. So on this episode, we're going to talk specifically about the shutdown that's going on right now in the port of Ningbo, and we're going to put that into some context of what that means in terms of global shipping. Hi, my name is Sal Mercagliano. I'm an associate professor of history at Campbell University, a former merchant mariner, and an adjunct instructor in maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. And today we're going to break this down. What's going on with this shutdown that's going on in Ningbo, and what does it mean in terms of the total global economic picture of global shipping. So BBC News, this is the story I just linked to. And again, you can go to any of the major mainstream uh, news outlets and see them start talking about it. They're talking about this shutdown that's taking place right now and the impact it's having. I want to break it down a little bit because the port itself isn't entirely shut down. It's a terminal within the port. So here it is. This is the story from Bloomberg that was on G Captain yesterday. China's partial port shutdown raises fears of closures worldwide. And we have seen this before. We saw it with Yangtang not too long ago, but now we're seeing it in this port. So Ningbo, which is just south of Shanghai, major con- container terminal for China, one of the biggest ones there is. And one of the six terminals in the port has shut down because of a COVID outbreak that has taken place. A worker tested positive, And to minimize this, China has basically shut down the port. And one of the things we're beginning to see is how companies are reacting to this. And I'm going to break this down a little bit and talk a little bit about it. Uh, This port and this terminal specifically deals with several companies. Uh, Maersk, uh, OOCL is on there. Uh, CMCA, uh, CMA is on there. So we're seeing some ports that are directly impacted by this. But across the maritime networks, we're seeing this. Uh, Here's uh, American Shipper, more supply chains delays as Ningbo port congestion worsens. Uh, The queue, the waiting line off the port right now is massive, as I'll show you. It puts Los Angeles and Long Beach to to shame in some ways. How big this terminal, uh, (coughs) excuse me, how big this uh, uh, waiting line is, is becoming to be. Uh, They're talking about already has recorded 37 blank sailings, meaning sailings that were canceled, not taking place in the port. Uh, They're talking about 330 container vessels worldwide idle outside ports because of congestion, not just uh, at Ningbao, but around the world right now, all having this impact. Over here for Splash 24-7, all eyes on Ningbo as as global supply chains await news of terminals reopening. Again, this is an image here of the port right there. You're seeing it uh, as it looks like. Again, we're seeing that that shut down that goes a little more detail here suspended operations at 3 30 local time on wednesday after a double jab 34 year old worker came down with the delta variant double jab meaning got in two shots basically uh either the pfizer or the moderna we don't know what but we're seeing this outbreak uh and they've identified more than 4,000 staff who go through the port for further testing and one of the things that china has done in the past that we've seen happen is that when they do have outbreaks, they immediately, immediately isolate, shut down, and let the uh, basically let it run its course, make sure no one else has it to prevent further spread. That's just the way China has been handling these type of outbreaks, and, and we're seeing that happen right now. Go over here to Maritime Executive. Carriers react quickly to terminal closure. We're already seeing some lines shifting. They're uh, working to respond to this. Uh, CMA, CGM, and Hapa Glide sent out notes to all its uh, uh, providers uh, about this, about the shutdown of the terminal. Uh, also, they're worried about spreading to the other terminals in the area, so they're, they're concerned about that. Maersk has already canceled six calls on the port, basically blanking their sailings from there, rerouting vessels around uh, to other areas. Of course, this port is is a massive port. What this is going to do, much like what happened with Yanatan, when Yanatan shut down, is this has a butterfly effect. It affects other aspects of the trade route. And what you see is that impact. Now, 
what it can conceivably do too is help relieve some of the backlog and some of the queues on ports, for example, in the United States. If ships aren't coming from the Far East, that may allow some ports in the United States to catch up, but it also causes havoc in the supply chain. Uh, go over here to the next story. This is from Container News. COVID-19 hits Ningbo, fears of the next Yanatan. Again, Yanatan is always that thing that's, that's it's haunting everybody right now. The fact that's happening. But I want to take you to this story. And this is the one I was going to load. In. This is the Lodestar report right here. Lodestar, they do this whole issue on making sense of supply chains. Really good job with it. But one of the things they focus on here is, is how is this directly affecting? And that's something you're not getting in the news today. So CMA CGM said cargo operations on its vessel Samson on its PX3 service and Rivoli on FL1, FAL1, which are alongside were temporarily on hold. Okay, what does that mean? This is the port in question. So this is Ningbao. Let's go ahead and zoom out here for a little bit. You'll see what it is. I put uh, the only vessels that are on here are supply vessels, green vessels. So there's no tankers, fishing vessels. But one of the things you see here is how packed this area is. This is uh, Shanghai up here, and this, this is down here at Ningbao. And as you zoom in here, one of the things you see too off the port here is that parking lot right there. These are all kind of container ships sitting here just waiting to get in. Uh, it's, it's a huge, massive terminal. But there are six terminals here up along the port here and then down here. This is the terminal in question that is having the issue. This is the CMA CGM Rivoli, which is mentioned right here. Uh, she's on the FAL1 route. This is the FAL1 route. So she's sitting here right now in Ningbao. You see her right there. Uh, she's supposed to leave from there, go to Shanghai, then down the Yanatan, then out to Port Klang, which is in Malaysia, then through the Malacca Straits, through the Bab el Mandab, through the Suez Canal, and then make runs up here to Europe, uh, Northern Europe, La Havre, Dunkirk, Rotterdam, Wilhelm Schaben, Hamburg, and then back through Malta, through the Freeport in Malta, and then run that route again. Uh, she's obviously not moving. That means she's not getting the Singapore on time. She's not getting the Yanatan on time. And if she doesn't get moving soon, she's going to be late getting into the berth in Europe, which throws schedules completely off. The other vessel they mention in the story right here is the Samson. She is right here. I think uh, there she is. Here's the CMA CGM Samson. She is on the Fleck, uh, uh, she's on the PEX3 route. That's this one right here. So here she is uh, in Ningbao right there. She gets ready to basically do a round the world trip. She goes from Ningbao up to Shanghai to Busan across the uh, Pacific. She doesn't actually go that way. She actually goes up this way, but that's just easier to show on the route. Uh, goes through the Panama Canal and then hits Houston, New Orleans, Mobile, Miami, then across the Atlantic through the Suez and back to Singapore. So she does an around the world trip. And again, those are just two examples right there. Uh, and there's other ships on the, on, on the berth right here. If we look through the whole berth, who's on berth right there. Uh, there's the Lunari of uh, Italian lines, Pegasus Terra right there, smaller container ship. Uh, here's Chinese shipping line right there. All these vessels, right? And then and again, the queue is off the port here waiting to get in. So this gives you a kind of an idea. When you shut down a terminal, it has this kind of butterfly effect across the area and creates disruptions. If you were banking on getting your goods out of Ningbo now, now all of a sudden it's in flux. And not only these ships, but obviously the next ships in line. And again, if those next ships are in line or days late getting on the berth, then they're going to be days late arriving at their next terminals, which means their berths may be gone because they're going to give them to other ships. This is why COVID is having such a big impact. We live in this just in, just out terms of logistics in some cases where goods have to be moving. Remember, this is the middle of August right now, but the end of August, early September is when goods have to be moving to get into the United States for the holiday season. And so right now we're seeing an uptick in cargo more than ever before, and it is not moving because of this, if there's another COVID outbreak in another port in China, this is going to magnify it even more. We've already seen this in Vietnam. We've seen this uh, in China, and now we're seeing it right here in the port of Ningbo. So all this means, and then th these are some follow-up stories that break this down even more. Container News 
went through this, they're talking about not just COVID-19, but they're talking about container shortages, and they're talking about their survival of what they call NVOX. These are the uh, non-vessel operators out there, container operators that basically uh, uh, book cargo. Uh, The exact term is non-vessel operating common carrier, but these are kind of like the travel agents for containers. And they've been Envox in the past have been under a lot of issues right now because container lines have been taking that business away from them. 10, 20 years ago, when there were dozens and dozens of container lines out there, it was hard to navigate through systems and, 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 and uh, abilities to book travel. Uh, now, basically, they're like the Expedia for airline traffic, Envox. But you know, when there's only four major carriers, it's pretty easy for you right now to go to each of the four major airlines in the United States and see what the cheapest rates are. And so basically, Envox are having a lot of trouble. And again, one of the big issues you're having, and this story breaks this down a little bit so you can take a look at it and, and understand it more, is you go to them for deals, but they're having a hard time getting deals. They talk about it here. Uh, cargo-worthy containers, which an Envoc could easily buy in, in U.S. $800 to $1,200 bracket before 2020, now come in at $2,200 to $2,800. So rates are skyrocketing. And, and, and again, if you go into someone to get you a container, that's a problem. The container lines have their containers, so you can lease them or, or rent them. And in some cases, that may be the cheaper alternative. And so this is having an impact on the logistics system. Go a little bit further here. Sam uh, Chambers with this story at Splash 24-7, shippers bamboozled. Congratulations, Sam, for using the uh, Scrabble word of the day right here for the most points uh, by growing disparity between liner shipping's five index providers. Again, we talk about rates all the time. You know, there are those rates for August 6 and the disparity between the different rates that we're seeing uh, on shipping from Asia to North Europe, Asia to the U.S. West, West Coast. Again, this has to do with Freight rates, it has to do with these added-ons by the container companies and by the shipping lines, the carriers. So we're not seeing a a good measure of what freight rates really are. You know, if you look at this, the Shanghai index has got it 14, almost 15,000 going to North Europe, uh, whereas the uh, the Baltic index has it at just uh, under 14,000. You get even more disparity here on the Asia to West Coast. And a lot of this has to do too, because people have booked large scale blocks of, of, of space on vessels already. And so they've already blocked in rates. A lot of these other rates are because of these companies adding these surcharges and this premier service that allows you to bump in the front of the line. That's why you're seeing that. Uh, this other story I thought was really an interesting one I want to add too, because uh, in the midst of all this, we still see container ships being built and to a larger and larger size than ever before. This story in Maritime Executive, the largest container ship arrives in Taiwan on its main voyage. This is not Evergiven, this is Ever Ace. Uh, She is the largest ship built for Evergreen so far. Uh, Container capacity of 23,992 TEUs, which is just a little bit more than the largest on HMM, which is 23,964. This is a little bit of of a race here to see who can get the bigger boxes on ships. And Everace is the next iteration of these vessels. You see them coming in here. And so these ultra large uh, uh, container ships or container carriers are really coming in at a bigger and bigger number. And again, they're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna see, keep keep them building. Evergreen right now is the seventh largest with almost 1.4 million TEU capacity. Uh, We're still seeing these vessels being pumped out right now. And as the Suez Canal begins its expansion program, these vessels may get bigger unless the Suez puts limitations on that. It'll be interesting to see. And in the backdrop of all this that's going on in the United States, there's move by Congress. I'm working on a video on this. I haven't put it all together yet because I'm still doing some research on it. Uh, Congress, two members of Congress uh, are, are putting together or have drafted actually a piece of legislation to start working uh, through the Federal Maritime Commission to give the Federal Maritime Commission a little bit more power in regulating this. Uh, John Garamendi, who's a a Democrat from California and Dusty Johnson, the Republican Congressman from South Dakota. So this is not, this is not left, right, Republican, Democrat, Trump, Biden. This is, this is, this is bipartisan is putting together 
a piece of legislation, uh, the Shipping Act of, of, of uh, 2021, uh, which was aims to reform the Shipping Act of 1984, which in turn had reformed the Shipping Act of 1916, uh, to basically give the FMC some more power to help regulate exporting of American goods on these foreign carriers. When the 1984 law was, was passed and when it was modified in 1996, and even when it was modified in 2017, we didn't quite see what's going on today. For example, in 1984, there, there were dozens of carriers. The biggest carriers carried a fraction of the total cargo, and there were American companies involved in that. Now, almost no American companies are involved. The top 10 carriers carry 85% of all the cargo, and they're all incorporated outside the United States. And basically what Garamendi and Johnson want to do is protect American exporters. This is one reason why Dusty Johnson, uh, Dusty Johnson is involved in this from South Dakota, because he's, he's, he's out there to protect the farmers to do it. Obviously, the uh, shippers don't agree with this. The, the head of the World Shipping Council, uh, which is their organization, which, again, is the most nefarious sounding organization I've ever heard of. But they, of course, oppose this and they've come back with with a lot of issues against it. But I'm, I'm doing a whole separate video on that that I'm gonna break this down and talk about it. So if you're interested in that, and if I, I can't imagine you would not be interested in, 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 in shipping legislation, then uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, be sure you get it, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that when that new video comes out, you'll be alerted about it. Give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. Uh, feel free to comment in the comment section, ask questions, anything more you want information on about global shipping and world shipping, please let me know. Happy to help. Uh, and until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.